Even though I made it to level 52, I wasn't feeling particularly well. The others were kind enough to me and I wasn't in danger anymore, but I shudder to recall what happened to Jace. I fear I'll never let this go. I told myself that there wasn't anything I could have done to save him, but maybe I could have, right? Hello everybody, I'm Stretch. Today, we'll be reading from A Wanderer's Journal, Chapter 3, From the Backrooms. Enough of my sob story. Anyway, I was wandering around the level like a hopeless mutt. Then a party pooper pulled me to the side. They asked if they could help me. I knew they weren't asking just to be nice, because I could tell that they were implying that I was, uh, sorta ruining the chill vibe they had going on. I told them what happened prior to my arrival. They tilted their head and stared blankly at me for a moment, then gestured for me to follow them. So I did. We ended up walking for quite a distance. The further we walked, the dimmer the surroundings turned. We stopped in front of a classroom. Light was coming through the bottom of the door, but something felt off. Then. I saw it. A small pool of viscous liquid was seeping out from under the door. It smelled rancid. I immediately covered my nose and mouth, asking what the heck was in there to make such an awful stench. The party pooper pulled the door open and a wall of putrid air hit me. I'd have vomited then and there if not for the scene before my very eyes. I was baffled, stunned. Strapped down onto a table in the middle of the classroom, was a party goer. It breathed in a slow and steady pace, disgusting raspy breaths leaving its body now and again. Tubes and wires were attached to its body, unknown fluids flowing in and out. Despite having its torso cut open, it was clearly alive. Whether through some advanced medical technology or some mumbo jumbo I didn't understand, it just wouldn't die. A few party poopers milled around jotting stuff down and checking vials as I stood there dumbfounded. What is this? My party pooper guide shrugged their shoulders and promptly ushered me out. Hold up, you can't just show me something like that and not elaborate. What the hell is going on here? Is this like some kind of sick torture against your mortal enemy? I never took you guys for the sadistic type. The party pooper shook their head. They explained that they weren't torturing the party goer but merely studying it. They then let out a sigh of disappointment, as if their study wasn't all that fruitful. Tired of everything, I snapped and raised my voice, begging the blue-faced creature to just spit it out. They nodded, then leaned against some lockers. They tapped a few buttons on their wristwatch and a holographic image of a party goer appeared. Holy, just how advanced are these guys? A computer voice started speaking through the wristwatch. Contrary to popular belief, party goers are just as intelligent as party poopers, and dangerously so. They move and hunt in packs, set traps, play dead, no clip at will, and can even alter digital information. They are geniuses, but deadly. We captured one to learn their secrets, to look for a potential weakness that can be exploited. The party goers do not and cannot know about any of this. Lou, then why show me all this? The party pooper shrugged. Then the voice continued. Turns out we are, or were, party goers. They, for some reason, transformed into us. Maybe they got tired of mindless homicide and reached a moment of clarity. But who knows? None of us can remember how we became party poopers in the first place. I simply nodded. The party pooper clicked on their wristwatch, and the hologram disappeared. They walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder. Stop blaming yourself for your friend's death. He never stood a chance anyway. Rise up and learn from your mistakes, because you might not be so lucky again the next time you run into them, not even with our help. At least. That's what I think they were trying to say. I mean, we just kind of stood there in silence for like a solid minute or two. Then they walked off, 
leaving me alone in the barren hallway. That night, I asked for directions to the nearest MEG outpost and left.